How do you spell more? S-P-I-R-E. Say hello to Transition's all new bike, the Spire. Twenty nine inch wheels, front and back, 170 mils of travel, 63 degree head angle in the high position. This is Transition's biggest, baddest bike other than their downhill bike. And who knows, it might even rival that. In what might be Transition's biggest bike to date is the all new Spire. The all new Transition Spire comes stock with 170 millimeters of travel up front and 170 out back. If riders want to decrease that travel, they can swap out to a 205 by 60 millimeter rear shock to drop the rear travel to 160 millimeters. In keeping with options, riders can put the flip chip in the high position and run a 27.5 inch rear wheel. The reach on our size medium in the high setting was 460 millimeters. The head angle, however, was an incredibly slack 63 degrees. Drop that flip chip to the low position and it drops to 62.5 degrees with size small, medium, and large riders getting 446 millimeter chainstays. Extra large and double extra large get 452 millimeter chainstays. Size per size, comparing the wheelbase of the Spire to Transition's TR11 downhill bike, the Spire is a full 10 millimeters longer. Using Transition's new referenced seat post height on their geometry chart gave our size medium a 78.8 degree seat tube angle. The Spire is available in two frame materials, both carbon and alloy. The carbon models are available in an XT build kit and a GX build kit. The alloy options mirror the carbon builds with an XT build kit and a GX build kit, but it also adds a Dior build kit. Transition's new patrol is available in aluminum only. And what we have here is a close to production prototype. We were able to get out on the trails and suss out some of the details of this new thing. The all new patrol uses a dedicated mixed wheel setup with a 27.5 inch rear wheel and 29 inch front wheel. Travel is 170 millimeters up front and 160 out back. Riders do have the option of putting in a longer stroke shock and increasing the rear travel to 170 millimeters. The new patrol is alloy only for now. In the geometry department, things have changed a little bit, but they haven't gotten too dramatic. We rode our size medium test bike in the high position, which still gave us an astoundingly slack 63.5 degree head angle. Reach was kept moderate with 455 millimeters. Using the flip switch available on the patrol, riders can drop it into the low setting, which gives you a 63 degree head angle and reduces the reach numbers. Chainstay for our size medium was 434 millimeters. Size large and extra large will jump up to 440 millimeters for the chainstay. The wheelbase was 1,231 millimeters. With a reference seat height of 660 millimeters, the effective seat tube angle is 78.8 degrees on our medium. That changes depending on each model's size and reference seat tube height, which we encourage you to check out on Transition's geometry chart. The Patrol is available in three different build kits. There's the Dior XT for $55.99 US. The next step down is equipped with SRAM's GX Eagle Group. For $37.99, riders can get in on the Patrol with the Dior package. After we got a little bit more information about these bikes with regard to build spec, geometry, and getting to get them on the trail, we took some time to sit down with Lars Sternberg from Transition Bikes to discuss the development process and what all went into these bikes. What, what's brought us to this point with the patrol? We had people riding the patrol, you know, it, like as a mullet and just kind of hybriding it, you know, putting like, you know, I think Marco raced the patrol 2019 at like TDS and he had, we, we got it all set up for him. He had like a 150 mil 2.9 fork, you know, so down forking by 20 mil to accommodate for the bigger wheel. Um, and he, he was really psyched on that setup doing that to that bike. You're still kind of compromising some things, you know, the front end's going to be higher even still with the shorter fork, which makes a seat tube angle slacker BB a little higher going back to the drawing board and actually like applying, you know, like proper geometry to that two nine front end, 
was obviously something we wanted to do. There's also options within that. You know, you like I like we were talking about. You could do a dual crown fork on it. You can also do a dual crown twenty seven five. Like if you just wanted to be, you know, not mixed wheel, um, you have the ability to do that as well. If you were to look at the Patrol Inspire um, side by side, like geo wise, like you might almost ask yourself why you're doing both offerings. You know, but when you ride them both side by side you get an understanding of like what the differences are. Like they're actually two very different bikes. Taking the Spire into account, you know, the Patrol still kind of fits that like super capable, but also like playful nature that the Patrol has always had, you know, like being a long travel 27.5 bike, but still able to be like a daily driver, you know? And so that, that was something that we definitely wanted to maintain while also providing the ability to to like be more bike than it was. The Spire's coming out in alloy and carbon. Um, was there any sort of particular reason that you kept the Patrol as only alloy for this rendition? Yeah, I mean, full disclosure. I mean, it's it really, we just wanted to, you know, we put our best effort into like the layout of the bike, the geometry, all the features and everything. But being such a dramatic departure from like a dual 27.5, yeah, we, I mean, really, we just wanted to make sure we fully nailed it. And if I would say at this point, if we are going to do a carbon offering in it, there's nothing that's going to be changed. This is mathematically, other than travel numbers, like the biggest bike you guys have ever made. Yep. Um, it's, it's an all new model. So first question is, um, like, why did Transition feel the need to expand its line? Like, where, what's the inspiration of purpose behind bringing a new bike, a new model, um, and especially such a big dog into the realm. So there, we definitely identified a need, you know, and, and an interest for a bigger bike than the Sentinel. Um, so that's kind of where the Spire came from. While it's, you know, more aggressive geometry, you don't feel like you're carrying around the boat anchor, you know? So what, what would you, what would you call this bike? Like, would you say this is a race bike or would you say this is just like a super massive bike like i mean not yeah. to try and like categorize or pigeonhole bikes but like what what would you call this thing as far as like like a racing perspective i think more that that more comes down to like where you're going you know and like what type of race it is you know like from an ews perspective you know if you're going to like say um finale or something that can be quite tight and janky, you know, that might not be the bike that you want to use, you know, but if you go somewhere like uh, either one of the two Italian rounds that are coming up, um, it, it might be a better option, you know, bigger, bigger terrain, more open, you know, like more, more natural, like high, high Alpine style riding. But then, I mean, if I had the option, if I were to go do any of those things right now, and I was choosing between Sentinel and Spire, I would probably just take the spire starting off with both bikes uh looking over the geometry charts one of the first things that jumped out to me that i think a lot of readers are also gonna notice is transitions use of size specific chain stays on both of these models what was what was the inspiration what was the impetus for you guys to start to bring those into your line i would say it's like probably pretty obvious you know we're trying to serve the customer as best as possible and a full size spread from like small to double extra large that's a big spread you know in wheelbase and like balance of like front center rear center um and so we you know we've identified that the shorter chainstay on the double xl is definitely like a, a huge difference in like rear center to front center and so getting that getting that balance back a little bit for those larger riders is uh is pretty pretty awesome um you mentioned a dual crown fork are both these bikes is just the spire would are they dual crown compatible yep they are um okay and uh that was part of the reason for the the straight you know 56 mil head tube was okay. so that you could you could for example take a tr11 headset you know that we supply with those frames and the, when you buy a TR11 frame, you get headset options that you have like your center position, inch and an eighth uh, headset cup, and you have a plus five reach or a minus five reach headset. Um, you also could do like a full angle set in there, like to make it slacker or steeper if you wanted. 
you're starting to see the blend of like long travel trail bikes and downhill bikes. The use of those two products is totally getting like inter- intermeshed, you know, like going up to Whistler or something now versus 10 years ago, the amount of trail bikes that you see in the bike park, a very high percentage now versus 10 years ago, trail bikes are becoming a lot more capable these days. And um, yeah, no, I mean, that's just one of the many th- things that we're doing to tr- try and provide as many options to our customers as possible. Looking at the geo charts, something that stood out that's new on these um, is the seat tube angle. Uh, transition references a given seat height um, to deliver a seat tube angle um, as opposed to just kind of a more nebulous description uh, as is yep. co- commonly the case. Um, what um, kind of explain the background on that and why you guys are, are doing that now? Yeah, well, the the C tube angle thing is like it, it's comp it's super complicated, right? Like whether you're determining that from like the actual BB, you know, like actual C tube angle to effective C tube angle is two dramatically different things. And so, like if you just arbitrarily say, yeah, our C tube angle is this, or our C tube angle is that, like it it could be reference in one number, but if you don't know what it actually, what that distance is from the, the top of the seat post, um, at a certain height, like you could be misled. So providing that it at least gives a a good baseline for somebody to get an understanding of what that bike is going to feel like in a seated position. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Brad.